Hi, welcome back. Uh, last time we left off on the 340 radio from Seal Beach VOR. As you can see, the localizer 25 is coming in. So I've already started a turn to a heading of 253 to intercept that localizer. I've already started my descent down to 1,500 feet. Now, one, I'm going to put the localizer, Hawthorne 109.1, at a heading of 253 on the VOR1 bug. Okay, let's keep that turn going as I'm dialing everything in. We'll identify it in VOR2. I will put the Seal Beach VOR in, 115.7, and a heading of 308 to intercept our checkpoint Hashi. Okay, so localizer at Hawthorne. Identified, let's identify VOR2. I'll start leveling off at 1,500 feet. Okay, VOR2 Seal Beach identified. So we are all set up for the final approach. Okay, now the needle is centered, so I'm gonna try to keep it as centered as I can. Uh, only minor adjustments again. I'm already at 1,400 feet, uh, that's 100 feet below where I should be, but it's okay, it really is okay, uh, the partial panel is not super accurate, you just want to be in that area of uh, 1,500 feet. Uh, okay, this timer is not working. Uh, I can't reset it. That's okay. All I'm going to do is look at the time. Uh, not that button either. All I'm going to do is look at the time when we are over Hashi. And I'll add 4 minutes and 8 seconds to it. And then that's when uh, our missed approach point will be. Anyway, okay. Everything is looking good. We are about 105 knots. Localizer is moving a little to the right. We can slow down a little bit just before hashy because the hash is about to come in. The flaps down. Okay. A VOR2 is now centered. This is hashy, and it will look at the time. It's 44 minutes 10 seconds. So at 48 minutes 18 seconds will be our missed approach point. I'll immediately put a heading of 293 into VOR2 heading bug. That way we can identify point demon. And since we're past Hasher, we can start our descent down to 660 feet. Usually in IFR, IMC, if I had all my instruments functioning and I had to do a step down descent, I would descend at a rate of about 1,000 feet a minute. But when you're partial panel, you don't want to go and deal with extremes. So um, I try to keep my descent down to about 500 feet per minute, down to 660 feet just because. We are so close to the ground, if the airplane gets into an uh, unusual attitude this low at this altitude, I will have a hard time recovering it in time. I will do my pre-landing checklist, see gums, carburetor heat is on, gas is on both, undercarriage is down and locked, mixture is fully rich, power is set for 90 knot approach speed, and seat belts are on.
continue the flight. We look at the VOR2, the needle is slowly starting to come in. Uh, I'm at about a thousand feet. Um, I can go all the way down to 660, but like I said, I want to do it very, very slowly. I don't want to get the airplane in unusual attitude at this, this point of the flight. So I'm going to try to maintain a heading of 253 as close as I can while I'm descending. Okay, so now the localizer is uh, centered again. Uh, I'm just going to try to fly that heading of 253, but it's a lot harder than it looks. Okay, so the VOR2 needle is about to get centered, at which point I can go down to 600 feet, but no lower. Our timer is at 47.10, so I got 1 minute and 8 seconds before I have to do a missed approach. Localizer needle is a little bit to the right, so let's just move a little to the right to intercept it back again. Uh, let's keep on descending. Okay, we're at 750 feet and we got about 30 seconds to go before our missed approach. Hopefully I'll break out of the clouds pretty soon. The localizer needle is close enough. Um, descending at 500 feet a minute. We're at 700 feet. So we got 10 seconds to go. Okay, here it is. All right. There's the airport to my left. Okay, let's not climb into the clouds again. Alright, let's keep the airport inside the whole time. And I'm going to stay about 600 feet because we're low enough as it is. The localizer brings you in very low. That stepped approach, it is meant for it to get you under the clouds as fast as it can. So that is why I am low. But anyway, there is the glide slope coming in. I'm gonna put the third notch of flaps down. I'm gonna slow the plane down to about 65 to 70 knots for the final approach. Okay, um, as usual, I'm gonna maintain that 65 to 70 knots using my pitch and uh, I'm gonna use the power to stay on the glide slope even though I'm a little bit above it it is just a little bit uh, it's okay to be a little bit above the glide slope if the engine goes at any time that means you can just make it to the to the runway so I'll reduce a little bit of power I'll re-intercept the glide slope again pretty soon right here. Let's keep down on the center line. Look at the localizer. Look how accurate that thing is. It's showing me I'm two feet off uh, off the center line. That is very accurate. All right, so here we come in. Look at the wind sock. We got pretty much headwind. It's flare. Let's keep that nose up as long as it wants to fly. Touchdown. And that was not bad. Hey, we made it safe. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, let's take a look at the track. Oh my god. What did I tell you? Look at that. Look at that. That's that's not bad actually. That is not bad at all. That's pretty decent. You can tell from this diagram where I had the vacuum failure right there. But I got pretty close to the VR, so that's good. Anyway, uh, I am a simmer, even though I'm a pilot. So I do like to watch myself landing, so... That's a nice flare about five feet above the ground. Keep the nose up. Nice touchdown. Nice touchdown. Actually, that, that is how you're supposed to do it. I'm not kidding. That is exactly how you're supposed to do it. Textbook. So, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope to see you guys soon and uh, see you later.